Hello everyone, my name is Hao. In 2005, a Chinese film called Dingjun Mountain was made in order to commemorate the birth of the first Chinese language film ever made in 1905, which was simply a recording of a Peking Opera performance and is entitled Dingjun Mountain as well. Unfortunately, the only print was destroyed in a fire in the late 1940s, and only one photo has remained to today. When we talk about some well-known Chinese language films, you probably will think about Ang Lee's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or Wang Kawai's In the Mood for Love, or Edward Yang's Yi Yi. Since the late 2000s, the cinemas of mainland China, Hong Kong and Taiwan have become increasingly intertwined, which are the three most important historical threads of Chinese language cinema, but these are all relatively recent films. How much do we know about the early Chinese language cinema? Let's take a look. The first films made by Lumiere Brothers were brought to China by one of their technicians and screened in Shanghai in 1896. However, the first movie Din Jun Mountain was made in Beijing. For the next decade, the production companies were mainly foreign-owned, and the domestic film industry was centered on Shanghai, a thriving entry pad and the largest city in the Far East. The first Chinese feature film was entitled The Difficult Couple, or Nan Fu Nan Qi in Chinese, and was made in Shanghai back in 1913, directed by Zhang Shichuan, who is the uncontested founding father of Chinese filmmaking and the man behind most of the earliest Chinese film classics. During the 1920s, film technicians from the United States trained Chinese technicians in Shanghai, and American influence continued to be felt there for the next two decades. Later, after trial and error, Chinese cinema hit its prime in the late 1920s and early 1930s, when Shanghai came to be known as the Hollywood of the East. China was able to draw inspiration from its own traditional values and began producing martial art films, with the first being Burning of the Red Lotus Temple in 1928, which was very successful at the box office. In the 1930s, Chinese cinema underwent vast changes. The first Chinese sound film, Sing Sang Girl Red Peony, or Ge Chu Hong Mudan in Chinese, was released in 1931. And the first truly important Chinese films were produced beginning in the 1930s, with the advent of the progressive or left wing movement, like Chen Bu Gao's Spring Skill Worms in 1933, Wu Yong The Goddess in 1934 and Sun Yu's The Big Road in 1935. These films were noted for their emphasis on class struggle and external stress, for example, the Japanese aggression, as well as their focus on common people. In part due to the success of these kinds of films, this post-1930 area is now often referred to the first golden period of Chinese cinema. Like the star system in Hollywood, the period also produced the first big Chinese movie stars, such as Hu Die, Ren Lin Yu, Li Li Li, Chen Yan Yan, Zhou Xuan, Zhao Dan, and Jin Yan. Throughout the 1930s, the nationalists and the communists struggled for power and control over the major studios. Their influence can be seen in the films the studios produced during this period. During the Japanese invasion of China in 1937, in particular, the Battle of Shanghai ended this golden run in Chinese cinema. Many of the filmmakers fled Shanghai, relocating to Hong Kong, the wartime nationalist capital Chongqing, and elsewhere. A solitary island period began in Shanghai. The filmmakers who remained worked in the foreign concessions. Princess Erin Fan, 1941, the first Chinese animated feature film, was released at the end of this period. It influenced wartime Japanese animation under Osamu Tezuka. After being completely engulfed by the occupation in 1941, and until the end of the war in 1945, the film industry in the city was under Japanese control.
after the World War II ended in 1945, Chinese civil war between the Communist Party and the Kuomintang started. Chinese national government fled to Taiwan along with the National Army. Hao Xiaoxin and Edward Yang's family were among them. Cinemas in mainland China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan started moving forward in different directions, and today we are glad to see them becoming more intertwined again.